Dear children, I hope you all must have watched my previous video on the unit, the price of flowers. Um, and I hope you all must have noted down the important questions which I discussed from that unit. Uh, the questions which have come uh, in the um, question paper over the years. Uh, now, now that I've finished with the second uh, block, I'm going ahead with the third block. Today we are going to do the first unit from the uh, third block titled as uh, Beyond the Horizon. Uh, the first uh, unit is actually a poem titled as Sunrise on the Hills, written by uh, the renowned American poet H.W. Uh, Longfellow. The poem is actually uh, a celebration of uh, uh, the uh, you know healing power of nature. The poet is ask, actually asking us to return to the lap of nature to soothe our uh, souls. Okay, and throughout the poem, we find that the poet is comparing the sun to a, a valiant knight and uh, nature uh, to his sweetheart, the princess. The poet is standing on top of a hill and he is so enamored or enchanted by the beauty of the sunrise. He says, I stood upon the hills when heaven's wide arch was glorious with sun's returning march. Heaven's wide arch uh, is actually, he is referring to uh, eastern horizon from where the sun uh, comes up. He is actually referring to the bound to the sky from where uh, uh, the sun uh, comes up. Okay, And by using the phrase heaven's wide arch, uh, he is actually attributing uh, you know spiritual quality to uh, nature uh, heaven's wide arch is actually a metaphorical representation of the uh, sky uh, and uh, uh, sun's returning march you know uh, that actually refers to the sun the sun has gone to uh, uh, gone, gone for a sleep uh, uh, because uh, the, the previous day the night uh, the sun had set and it, uh, he, he had gone for a sleep so he's coming after a long slumber and that is being compared to uh, the valiant return of a knight or a king or uh, uh, you know a return march of uh, the triumphant return march of the uh, uh, soldiers okay so as i said um, you know here sun is being uh, uh, personified you know sun is being compared to a, a valiant knight or a, a king who comes after a, a victory okay and uh, heaven's wide arch as i s told you it's a metaphorical representation of um, uh, you know the sky when the sun came up, uh, you know, woods were brightened by the sun's rays, and the forests uh, were brightened by the sun's uh, rays. And the poet says, uh, soft gales went forth to kiss the sun-clad valley. It's a, a poetic way of expressing the beautiful morning breeze. Gale is actually a, a strong wind, uh, but, uh, you know, here uh, a, a kind of softness is attached to it, a romantic softness is attached to it as it is about to go and kiss the uh, valley that is covered with the uh, glorious rays of the uh, sun so it is an instance of personification soft gale is being personified as he as it goes uh, forward to kiss the uh, sun clad uh, valley and uh, when the sun came up uh, the glory of the clouds uh, fades because with the sun's glorious entrance the clouds do not have any role in the sky so they depart from the sky as if they are soldiers defeated in a uh, battle and uh, when the sun comes up uh, the mist is slowly getting cleared away and uh, uh, the poet could see the sharp edged or, or could see the peaks of uh, uh, hills uh, piercing or thrusting the gray uh, mist as if uh, and they look like as if they are sharp edged weapon the poet refers to it as shattered lances lances a sharp edged weapon uh, so uh, you know peaks are being compared to sharp these the peaks uh, the peaks which are piercing the uh, gray mist are being compared to sharp edged weapons or shattered lances it's an it's an example of metaphor peaks being compared to uh, you know lances uh, and uh, on the cliff uh, the poet could see a, a pine a withered pine tree uh, completely uh, without any uh, trees because of the uh, strong blow of the uh, wind and uh, uh, the poet says that uh, with the entry of the sun uh, you know nature a mellow blush comes on the uh, face of the nature and the nature is nature is uh, you know sun sweet 
street art so with the entry of the sun a blush comes on uh, nature's face and uh, nature starts to uh, smile and the uh, valley starts to glow uh, with the entry with the entry of the uh, sun and uh, the poet could see uh, that the river water uh, that was uh, it was darkened by the shade of trees as it was fl uh, flowing uh, the river water was darkened because of the shade of the trees the trees were casting a shadow on the river water but when it was falling down as a cascade uh, sun's rays were falling directly on it and it was shining brightly okay and uh, the poet also could see um, and hear uh, the sound of a bittern making a spiral uh, motion in the sky bittern is a small bird making a spiral motion in the um, uh, sky so in the first stanza which comprises of uh, 18 lines uh, the poet is giving us plenty of um, uh, visual images about the beauty of nature images that appeal to our eyes and in the second stanza we find that poet is giving us a lot of audit auditory images uh, images which appeal to our um uh, you know uh, ears let's see what he says he says he could hear the sound of uh, uh, water rushing at a, a distance okay mm -hmm. and he could uh, see a water current whirling and flashing by the um, you know blue lakes uh, silver beach mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you know he says that uh, the uh, woods the branches of the trees were bending uh, uh, you know and touching the uh, lake okay as if they were kissing the uh, lake and uh, the poet says that he could hear the over the valley the uh, a gentle and melodious sound of the village bell could be uh, heard and he could also hear the uh, you know screeching sound of an owl and it was as if the owl was uh, replying to the uh, merry as well as faint shout sent, shouts sent by the uh, valley and thin smoke started coming from the thick leaved branches of the trees perhaps from the uh, huts of the people living in the valley so as you can see in the second stanza you can find plenty of auditory images you know the sound of the village bell the sound of the uh, screeching owl uh, in the first stanza we also heard about the sound of uh, uh, sound which uh, the bittern makes when it is making a spiral motion in the sky then uh, you know all these sounds could be uh, with sounds which appeal to our uh, you know ears uh, uh, is being mentioned by the poet after giving wonderful uh, descriptions uh, and uh, images about the beauty of nature and the glory of the sunrise um, in the poet is concluding the poem with a beautiful message he says that if you have lots of problems and worries in your life which you would like to forget okay uh, if you want to read a book uh, that can prevent your uh, you know heart from losing hope and if you want to rejuvenate your soul uh, go back to the lap of nature return to the lap of nature nature definitely has an answer to all your problems and uh, uh, worries and the sweet look which nature has uh, is not dimmed by tears of any kind nature can definitely wipe your uh, tears so go back to the lap of nature uh, nature will uh, you know rejuvenate your soul it will soothe your soul now that we have uh, discussed the poem the theme of the poem let's have a look at uh, the questions that have uh, asked from that have been asked from this particular poem over the years in the question paper uh, i'm going to read uh, one by one you can note down the questions okay the kind of questions which are likely to come from this uh, poem uh, first one is describe the beauty of the hills and valleys as presented in the poem we have already discussed that isn't it how does the uh, valley appear you know um, how how does the poet describe the uh, sunrise huh? uh, how the poet compares uh, the eastern horizon uh, uh, in refers to eastern horizon as a heaven's uh, uh, white arch and uh, uh, you know how he describes uh, the clouds um, that depart from the valley uh, as if they had soldiers defeated in a battle um, you know how soft gale goes uh, forward to kiss the sun clad valley um, you know how 
how the uh, pines, uh, uh, so how the uh, sharp-edged peaks are thrusting the grey mist, and uh, um, this visual, uh, the uh, the image of the pine, uh, a withered pine on top of a cliff, you know, all those things, the river water darkened by the shade of the trees, all these are beautiful images of um, nature. You can explain all that. Huh? Okay. Now, second question is, I uh, explain the meaning of the line, the, the first four lines. I stood upon the hills when heaven's white arch was glorious with sun's uh, returning march and woods were brightened and soft gales went forth to kiss the sun-clad veils. So I'm not explaining that once again, but when you are explaining the meaning of the lines, you have to mention the figure of speeches that uh, were employed in, the, in these four lines. For example, heaven's white arch is a metaphorical representation of the sky. Uh, um, then uh, of nature uh, uh, and uh, uh, that is uh, um, sun is being compared to sun is personified uh, and sun is being compared to uh, the knight uh, or a king uh, who comes after a, a victory and a soft gale it is being personified as it goes forward to kiss the sun clad valley and then uh, uh, the next question, inspired by the palm sunrise, you visited one of the places near your uh, locality, uh, famous for its natural uh, beauty. Share the experiences uh, which you had with your English teacher through an email. You know the format of an email. Okay, I hope you all know the format of an email. We have done it. We have written so many emails. So please go and have a look at the uh, format uh, the, uh, that you have to use when you are writing an email because format uh, uh, of the email uh, fetches you one or two marks. Okay. Uh, and as far as this is concerned, uh, think of a place that you have uh, visited in your locality, which has got, uh, uh, which is of great uh, beauty. Okay, and uh, your feelings and emotions when you uh, visited that particular place. What uh, attracted you to that particular place? The features of the place, you know, uh, the scenic beauty that you saw over there. Uh, all that you can uh, explain uh, by writing an email to your. Uh, a teacher okay um, and uh, all the uh, you know features of nature uh, all the sounds and sights uh, uh, all that you can uh, and the people that you came across over there uh, you know your interactions with the, uh, the people over there uh, the, Im uh, the Im beautiful images that you caught in your camera or whatever it is you can write whatever you want you can write um, about your visit uh, can be mentioned uh, in the email. Okay, then uh, next question is uh, describe how the poem helps us have a direct experience of uh, the beautiful uh, sights and sounds of a uh, place. Of course, uh, this particular poem uh, it definitely gives uh, beautiful images, uh, uh, visual images as well as auditory images. The first answer, which comprises of uh, uh, 18 uh, lines, is full of visual images. And the second stanza, you get plenty of auditory images, like the sound of the uh, village bell, the sound of the, uh, the screeching sound of the uh, owl, uh, the b uh, noise made by the bittern, all these are, um, you know, uh, uh, s sounds that you hear from the uh, valley. So you can mention uh, that you definitely uh, feel as if you ha you are actually seeing the sunrise as is seen by the poet. Okay, uh, so it's almost as if you are getting a, a first-hand experience of watching a uh, sunrise. Okay. The next question is, um, more than a nature poem, it sounds like a plea for an escape from daily worries and concerns. Do you agree? Do you think that this poem is actually a uh, uh, escape from your problems and worries? It's not like that, isn't it? It's a, a simple poem explaining the beauty of uh, a nature. Okay, uh, uh, the sights and sounds of uh, uh, nature. Uh, it, it is basically about the healing power of nature and all that. Of course, uh, in nature definitely has an. In the final, uh, when the poem poet concludes the poem, he definitely says that nature uh, definitely has an answer to all your problems and worries and all that okay uh, you uh, you can escape um, from your worries uh, by uh, you know returning to the lap of uh, nature okay uh, poet says like that but it's not as if you know uh, uh, this poem is like an escape um, uh, from your uh, you know uh, problems and worries now what is the message of the poem sunrise on the hills uh, 
we have discussed it already uh, that is uh, if you have any problems in life uh, which you would like to forget uh, if you want to rejuvenate your soul if you want to soothe your soul go back to the lap of uh, nature okay and nature the sweet look which nature has um, uh, you know cannot be dimmed by uh, any tears any kind of tears okay uh, then the next question is the palm presents the experiences of the poet as he watches sunrise amidst the hills haven't you observed a sunrise write your observations of the sunrise in four or five sentences um, uh, you know you all must have watched sunrise at some point of your life or, or the other isn't it you know uh, it's not for that to do you need not go to a, a you know beach or anything like that isn't it uh, you must have seen it becomes all the more beautiful if you are watching the sunrise from a, a beach if you go to a place like kanyakumari or if you go to any beaches uh, in your locality uh, the beauty of sunrise uh, as well as sunset uh, uh, is all the more uh, you know uh, better okay you get a better view you uh, and uh, uh, what are you what, what, normally what are the feelings which you get when you watch uh, a sunrise or a sunset uh, what is what what are your uh, feelings um, the sunrise is always a hope isn't it uh, uh, it gives it, it, it's a start of a uh, day isn't it uh, it's a start of uh, fresh hopes uh, and aspirations and all that okay there is always uh, something to look forward to there's a lot of positivity attached with uh, uh, sunrise okay mm? Uh, so that all that you can write mm -hmm. then uh, you will get short answer questions like uh, what does heaven's uh, wide arch refers refer to it refers to eastern horizon from where the sun uh, uh, comes up okay what is the figure of speech over there it's a metaphor okay uh, uh, heaven's wide arch eastern horizon is being compared to heaven with this uh, we have discussed almost all the likely questions which can come from this particular poem uh, so note down all these questions and uh, prepare well when you are revising the poem so that's all that's all for today